friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands on Learning. And today's video is going to be about how we use Play-Doh in a lot of our math activities. <clears throat> Just to make things more hands-on and uh, to have some manipulatives for the kids to use that keep them engaged. Okay, so um, first thing is I have three different sizes of Play-Doh here. Um, it really doesn't matter, obviously all dough is the same, so um, it doesn't have to be like play dough. You can get any kind of dough. I know there's recipes online. Look at these is mixed up because my kids mess with it. Um, I know there's recipes online where you can make your own, uh, you know, play dough kind of thing. See, mixed up. But anyway, um, I have <clears throat> the big containers like this. And the reason I mention this is because sometimes we use them in the containers, and I'll show you that. Um, but I have the big containers. <clears throat> I have the little party container ones that are small and then I have the middle size ones that are kind of like this. Um, I think this one is like a Star Wars one but it doesn't really matter. It's just it's all play-doh and a lot of mine is mixed up because we use it a lot and the kids mix the colors. I try to, this one's not too bad, I try not to let them mix the colors but you know they're kids so. Um, Alright let's get into some of the activities. Okay, so one of the things I like to have the kids do with their Play-Doh is practice making tally marks. So this is a great way to get the kids um, using a hands-on method for learning tally marks. So I will give them a number. Say I give them the number six, and I will say, please roll out six long snakes. Okay, so they'll roll out their six snakes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then I will say, okay, now the way we do tally marks is that we draw four sticks and then we cross the fifth one. Um, and so that way we can count by fives and add on. <clears throat> so to make number six, we would have four of our sticks or our snakes. We take one and cross it and then we'd have one extra. So we just count five, one more is six. And I just have the kids do this over and over with different numbers. I'm using, by the way, um, these number manipulatives. They're from puzzles and some of them are magnetic numbers um, that I keep in here. And you don't have to have this. You could just write a number on the board um, or just say a number out loud if you have a whole classroom um, and that way they can do it. But um, for our purposes, I just have a manipulative here with the number for the child. And so um, they can just continue rolling out different snakes and making tally marks. Another way we like to use tally marks in math is for basic counting, like with um, pre-K pre kids or, you know, kids that are just learning to count. So these are our counting, um, these are our number, I should say, maths. These are Play-Doh maths, anyway. And uh, what, what we do is the kids roll out the dough to go ahead and make the number, okay? So... First they make the number, and then it says, and here it has the number word for them as well, so they're recognizing the word with the uh, representation of the number here, and then they're going to um, put four dots on the bug. So now they are doing um, the quantity of the number. So the way I have them roll out their ball, little um, Play-Doh balls is usually I just have them take a little bit and then I have them roll it on the table. That seems to be easier for the little ones, but if they can manage to roll it in between their hands, like I am, that's another way to do it too. So um, they're gonna count out four of them. One, two, three, four. So yeah, we use these mats. Kiddos love it. They're seeing the number uh, in three different ways. They're seeing the number word. They're seeing the number, uh, I guess, representation, and then they're seeing the quantity. Uh, as they count out the number. And of course, um, these number mats, you know, are uh, all kind of different. And they have different things that the kids just have to do for the number. Um, you can get these. They come with alphabet mats as well. I'll even link to those. Okay, so along that same line, these um, number mats come from my early learner's math curriculum, the very first unit. First unit is on counting to 10. 
And um, what we do with these ones, I'm just gonna pick a number. Let's say I'm gonna pick number five. And um, on these ones, it has a child and he's representing the number with his uh, sco ice cream scoop. So here he has five ice cream scoops. Now I like to use these to, um, with Play-Doh to teach the children how uh, we do um, touch point math. And if you have not ever seen or heard of touch point math, I did a video on that a little while ago um, that shows you what touch point math is and how you can use it with students. So I will try to remember to leave a link below to that video uh, if you missed it. But what we do is we use these mats and we take our Play-Doh and we put them on the touch points on the numbers. So here I have one, two, three, four, and the fifth touch point is right there. So we do like so. And we count out our five touch points to represent our number five. And then this really gets the kids working because you can do is you can then make it into addition. So here I have five. And then I can put my four touch points on this one. So I'm just gonna really quick try to put four of them on there. Whoop. The number four touch points go in the four corners. And then the kids can actually use their finger to count if they need to. One, two, three, four. Now we're adding four plus five. So we're gonna keep counting. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So four plus five, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Excuse me. I don't know how I did that. Okay, so four plus five equals nine. I'm like about to say four. 4 plus 5 equals 10, and that would have been really funny. Okay, so 4 plus 5 equals 9 because we have touched all of our touch points. Now, what I teach the kids is once they're ready, I say, now, if we have the number 4, we already know we have 4, so we're just going to count on. So we just say 4, and now we'll use our touch points to count on. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, you can have them squish them if you want as they're counting. So we have 4, 5, whoop, 6, seven, eight, nine. Some kids need, I mean, that much of a physical um, representation as they're counting, and that is totally fine. So whatever uh, works for your students, that's what you do. So anyways, that's one way to uh, do some addition with touch points and with your um, Play-Doh. So, all right, moving on. By the way, if you are enjoying these activities that I am showing you, I would love it if you would check out my Early Learners Math Curriculum because it is based on a hands-on method for teaching math. And it is a great curriculum for students ages four through six. Um, and so I would, I would highly recommend you check it out if you like these activities because it incorporates all of this kind of stuff. There's a lot of research out there that I've been reading lately. If you follow me on Facebook, you've been seeing my posts. I've been posting some of it. Um, there's a lot of research out there that I have been um, reading lately about how um, important hands-on learning is, especially for math. Um, a lot of the research um, indicates that um, hands-on learning in math is one of the um, best ways to do it. So anyway, all that to be said, um, I hope you're enjoying this video and these activities. Okay, the next activity is um, just something that we do sometimes to practice um, putting numbers in sequence or like missing numbers. So that's a really important concept um, for kids is like is missing numbers and sequencing numbers. So uh, what I did is I pulled out these um, puzzle pieces and they may be a little, yeah, they might be actually a little bit too big. For what I want to do. Instead, I might use some magnetic numbers for this. Let's do that. Okay, so um, what you can do is you can take, I took the little um, small containers of Play-Doh and I opened up three of them. And then what you can do for your students is um, put, let's do, yeah. You can go ahead and put one number in here and one number in here. And then you can, um, I would of course have all of your magnetic numbers laying out with students. And then you can say, can you see that? I'm gonna push it back a little bit. And then you can say, um, what number goes 
in between seven and nine and then they look through their magnetic numbers and when they find it they can put it in between and then you count them together seven eight nine and that makes the sequence you can mix it up and do something different so you can do um here's three here's four what number comes next they look through their magnets they find the five and they put it in their number sequence you can also do what comes first so let's say you put four and five in there and you can say what comes in front of four they'd have to find the three and put it in their number sequence I just like this because kids love play-doh they love it when the numbers kind of stand up and it just adds a little element a uh, little bit more fun than just doing regular magnets on um, a board if you have I was just thinking if you use the bigger containers of play-doh it might work better with these bigger numbers that I was going to show you or just take out the play-doh altogether out of the container and just make like some big piles three big piles and then just have the kids you know squish it into the pile so that way it would work as well okay so here's an activity from my um, early learners math curriculum and it's building shapes and so um, here I have some cards that it comes with and it talks about how you can build the different shapes using play-doh and some popsicle sticks. So um, what this card says is you're gonna build a square. So we're gonna take four popsicle sticks and we've got our Play-Doh. And what they have to do is they have to roll the Play-Doh into balls and then they have to place the Play-Doh like so to make a square. And so, this one anyways um, so this activity comes from my unit all about shapes it's 2d shapes and so anyways you get the idea um, they're going to use their cards and they're going to use popsicle sticks and play-doh and they are going to go ahead and make whatever shape the card tells them to make so the kids are learning the word for the shape, the name of the shape. They are doing some STEM practice as they put it together. And there you go. All right, this next activity is also from my early learners math curriculum. This one comes from the unit on teen numbers. I believe it's unit two, if I remember correctly. And um, <clears throat> what I have done with this one is you, there's a mat here and it has numbers on it. Now this is called honey count and cover. So it has honey bears on the mat and then it has the uh, beehives and some of the honey um, pots, okay? And so um, you attach the cards, the honey pots to craft sticks and then you use your Play-Doh. <clears throat> and so what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna pick up a craft stick and they're going to count the number on their craft stick. Now remember, we're working on T numbers, so any number from 11 to 19. Um, <clears throat> so to count this number, I can recognize that this is a 10, so I count three more, 11, 12, 13. So now what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna take their Play-Doh, they're gonna find the number 13, place it on that number, see that's number 13. And then they're gonna take their stick and they're gonna stick it in there and cover up 13. And they're gonna continue until all of their sticks are on their board covering them up. Let's do um, just two more. Okay, so this number is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm gonna take my Play-Doh, find the number 14, which is right here, and then put my stick in there. Okay, I've covered up 14. Now let's see. Um, this one is 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. So let's find the number 17. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up. It's right there. Did you see that? That 17 right there. And I'm gonna stick my card, or my, yeah, my 17 in there. So I'm represent, I have the number representation matching up to the number, uh, word, or the number, I don't know, the written number, I should say. And so um, there we go. And then they're just gonna continue till all their sticks here are matched up on their mat and they should all be in the right place. And then the teacher can go ahead and double check it. If, if they weren't working right next to the student, they can come back and double check it and just lift them up and see if they all match, like so. And uh, yeah, so this is another fun one that we, we like to do. Okay friends, please don't mind my fingers because I'm getting dough all over them doing this video. 
But for this activity, um, this is a graphing activity from the uh, graphing and data unit of my early learners math curriculum. And um, for this particular activity, the kids have to spin. It's, it's building a monster graph. They have to spin and then they're going to build their graph. And now we're going to use Play-Doh to build our graph. And I have matching colors of Play-Doh for this one. So I have green to match this monster here. I pulled out some um, orange to match this guy. I pulled out some blue to match this guy. And I pulled out some purple to match this gal down here. All right, so um, what they're going to do is they are going to go ahead and spin the spinner. So here I go. And whatever it lands on, I'm just going to slow it down. Okay, look, it landed on purple. So I am going to take a little ball of my purple dough. And I am going to place it, can you see this, on my graph. So now I have one here for purple. I'm going to spin again. And this time it landed on blue. So now my blue guy gets a piece. Anyway, the kids are going to continue on until one of these monsters has made it to the very end of their graph and they're going to see which monster is going to have the most. So here I have purple again, and I won't make you watch me spin. Okay, so um, I spun and spun until one of my monsters made it to the end. I ended up, um, my orange monster made it to the end first. So I ended up spinning a lot of the orange one. So now I have an actual graph, and that's how the kids are going to end up. And then the last part is they are going to look at their um, spinning page. I guess this would be called a mat. I'm going to move my graph over here. And they're going to answer the questions. And so it says, this monster has the most, and there are some cards here. My orange monster had the most, so I'm going to put his picture in there. And this monster had the least. Looking at my graph over here, it looks like my blue monster had the least. And I'm trying to get that glare out of there. Okay, so his picture goes there. And, of course, I have my other two monsters' pictures as well. But that is, so that is how this activity works. And uh, you can use it with any kind of manipulative you want. But I really like using it with the Play-Doh. Okay, the last um, activity I'm going to show you is a subtraction activity. This comes from the subtraction unit of my early learner's math curriculum. And this one is particularly made for using with Play-Doh, and it is called Smash It, I believe, something like that. Um, I put the, yeah. Anyways, I put the bag that has the label over to the side, so I think it's called, like, Subtraction Smash It. And so what the kids do is, um, it's a 6 minus 5, so there are 6 circles here. They're going to start out with 6 Play-Doh balls, and they're just going to put them in the circles. And you... If you've been watching my videos, you may have seen this before. I also have a picture that I shared on Facebook of um, my kiddos doing this activity. Okay, so they roll out um, their Play-Doh balls, and then they're going to subtract five, so they smash five of them. So one, two, three, four, five. Take away five by smashing them. I have one left, so six minus five equals one. And I have them use a dry erase marker to write their answer. Um, so there are a handful of these different ones. So this one is 5 minus 2. So of course, they're going to take 5 um, Play-Doh balls, and then they're going to subtract 2 of them, or smash 2 of them. They love doing this, and my, my son, like, does his whole palm. But anyway, um, so they're going to smash 2. So 1, 2. I use my fingers. He uses his whole palm. And there's 3 left, so 5 minus 2 equals 3 and so on. So there's just a handful of these different cards that the kids can um, practice their numbers with. That's the last activity I was going to show you today. There are plenty of other fun ways you can use Play-Doh for math and especially we use it a lot for even for phonics and reading. Um, and I'm sure you've seen some of those activities in some of my other videos. So thank you so much guys for watching and uh, check below for any of those links that I mentioned and we'll see you next time. Bye.